Okay, we're back. So here's where we left off a moment ago. We were talking about uh, how inclusions form and then the first type of the unconformities that you're being introduced to, the nonconformity. Um, and in this next image <coughs> slide, you'll actually see something where things start to get more complicated in a hurry. Now thus far we've talked about what? We've talked about superposition, we've talked about original horizontality, we've talked about cross-cutting relations. I've told you a little bit about unconformities, a nonconformity specifically, I haven't told you yet what they are. Um, they relate to time gaps um, in what happens there, so a period of erosion and non-deposition. Uh, but what I said, we'll, we'll get into those in a little more detail here in a moment. But the next principle that we're just discussing is cross-cutting relations. Okay? Now here's a block diagram where you have a whole lot of different beds that have been expo are being exposed to you. And you might notice that things got relatively complicated compared to what you've seen thus far. Um, but, you know, if you stop and think about it for a minute and don't panic too much, you, know, you can really start to tell what's going on here. Again, you always want to be thinking bottom up. <clears throat> so as you look at, well, if you look up here at this top, or top section, things seem to make sense. I mean, you have superposition at play, everything is originally horizontal, but as we go below this wavy line, <clears throat> and that wavy line does indicate some sort of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, unconformity exists at that point. I'll tell you why here in a moment. You'll notice the beds down here are folded. They're no longer flat. Well, think about original horizontality. These were originally flat. They were folded after that, that fact. Okay, So the fact that these beds are now folded and no longer nice and flat tells us that that folding event happened after those beds were originally in place. So you can start to put things in their relative order. Also, these beds are lying on this B thing, which, you know, given the shape, going to interpret to be some sort of probably igneous intrusion. Um, so that all automatically tells you that this wavy line is relating to another unconformity, one we've already talked about, a nonconformity. All pretty cool things you can already maybe start to see here, even in something that gets more complicated than what you've been exposed to thus far. But the main reason and thing I want to, thing I want to point out here in this diagram are three features. This linear feature here, it's basically causing some sort of offset in this part of the, of the block. Um, this linear feature here, which is causing some sort of offset here. And then this other linear feature here, which is thicker, uh, which is actually cutting across all these things. Ah, well, there's a, an important concept. Each one of these linear features are cutting across and somehow disturbing material that was already there. So this is cross-cutting relations in, as a perfect example, okay? In this case, you know, this linear feature that's relatively thin and caused displacement along both sides of this feature, this is a fault. This is some place where the Earth system broke, and when it broke, things shifted, and movement occurred, displacement occurred. So what does that mean? Well, that means that in order for these rock units here, all of these rock units that have been cut and disturbed by this, to be moved, they all had to be there before this fault feature. So this fault feature is one of the youngest things that's occurring in this diagram since it cuts everything that exists, right? If we come over here and look at this fault, Okay. This fall cuts across all this purple and reddish colored material layers down in th this part of the diagram. Okay. It doesn't cut across this unconformity. It doesn't <clears throat> um, even cut across this intrusion. So that intrusion is going to tell you something about how things might have uh, been lining up here and when this fault occurred and so forth. All right. And then lastly, we have this thicker layer, D, here that's cutting up through this material. That's something called a dike, okay? basically a place where there might have been a fault or fracture system, and magma forced its way up through this unit and formed this nice little linear igneous rock feature that's cutting across B and all these layers in C and D and going right up almost to the surface, but not quite. So this is, again, younger than most of this material, but it's definitely not younger than bed E. So you can use all these 
factors in order to go in and unravel the sequence of event that's involved with this, okay? But in this case, we're really looking at cross-cutting relations, okay? And the fact that these features are cutting across things that already exist, that gives you, again, a relative sense of when they occurred. <clears throat> Next, let's look at the unconformities. Uh, here's an example of the second type of unconformity. And again, an unconformity is a place where you have a time gap. And for those of you who might have ever been to Colorado, when you've driven through Denver out towards Golden on I-70 and head up into the mountains, when you leave the relatively flat area and go up into the mountains, you cross from sedimentary rocks into igneous and metamorphic rocks. At the place where the sedimentary rocks actually contact those igneous and metamorphic rocks, that's a nonconformity. But there's also a very distinct time gap there. The sedimentary rocks are about 300 million years old. Pretty old, right? The igneous and metamorphic rocks are 1.7 billion years old. There's 1.4 billion years of Earth history missing on that nonconformity and unconformity. So an unconformity is a time gap. <clears throat> Another place where that happens is where you might have you know, a sequence of beds that have been deposited, like this upper layer here. And over time, you know, things happen in the area. You know, maybe some tectonics comes into work, doesn't overturn it, but folds it and uplifts an area, brings that to the surface, so that well, you know, once you bring material to the surface of the Earth, it starts to weather and erode. So after it weathers and erode, you know, you leave a rough surface. You have folded beds underneath that are, you know, at a relative tilt compared to the to the ground surface above it. And if you know the seas reintrude and you get redeposition of materials, like is what's going on down here in the lower part of the block, new beds are laid down on top of those original beds that were folded at this unconformity surface. The beds underneath are at an angle, you know, on both sides of this thing, relative to the beds on top that are horizontal. That's referred to as an angular unconformity. Okay? Here's an example of a quick depiction of the materials around the Colorado, the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River. This is where the Colorado River cuts down through the sedimentary and igneous and metamorphic rock units through the desert southwest. And we'll actually look at interpreting this section here in a few moments in another one of these segments. But, you know, I want to point out the fact that, you know, we have igneous and metamorphic materials in contact with sedimentary. So there's your nonconformity. Here's an angular unconformity here. Okay, another one of those time gaps. The beds down here are at an angle relative to the beds up here that are all horizontal. And even within these horizontal beds, you'll notice that again there's these nice squiggly lines. Those again indicate the presence of time gaps, unconformities. Except for in this case, that unconformity is referred to as a disconformity. So, igneous or metamorphic rocks in contact with sedimentary gives you a nonconformity. Sedimentary rocks with the beds underneath are at an angle to horizontal beds above it, meeting in an, at a time gap or one of these uh, nonconformable surfaces, is referred to as an angular unconformity. And where you have the unconformable surface, those places where you have the time gap that are in the same bedding plane as the rest of the beds, that's referred to as a disconformity. Now you'll also notice that <clears throat> these rock units do change. We have a shale, sandstone, limestone sequence here. The contacts between those units, you know, the limestone here and the sandstone, the sandstone and the limestone, those are all nice and relatively straight. Those referred to as being, oh, that's referred to as a conformable contact. In other words, the nature of the environment changed, so the types of rocks you're going to get change, but there's no gap in the time sequence. Okay, they all form you know, within a relative continual time basis. Okay, here's the end of uh, section number two. Be back to you in a moment.